okay. <laughs> Greeters. <laughs> Before I get into the meat of today's video, I feel like I have to break down a bit of confusion regarding how Disney Plus Star works outside of America. Yes, I know, I'm stalling, but you already knew the type of video this was going to be from the thumbnail alone, so don't, don't worry, you're gonna, you're gonna get the outrage in a minute. Just, 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 just let me have this. Anyways, if you are a resident of Canada, the UK, Australia, or New Zealand, and you have a Disney Plus account, you now have access to the Star feature as of February of 2021. What the Star feature does on the Disney Plus app, for those of you who don't already know, is that it acts as a home for more adult-oriented film and TV shows on the otherwise friend family-friendly streaming service. And the reason why there's no star feature on American Disney Plus is because we have the Disney-controlled Hulu to access said adult content. The downside, of course, is that Hulu is its own streaming service with its own monthly subscription, unless we get the Disney Hulu bundle that includes... I don't know, some sports shit. Now, Hulu, because it was pretty much Netflix's original and only competition back in the day, and hasn't really switched to the same content release schedule as the more newer subscription services, still operates under the same simultaneous release schedule as the Red End. An entire season of a television show released on the day of the premiere, as opposed to the one episode a week model adapted by Disney Plus and Hulu Max when they feel like it. And because the star feature on versions of Disney Plus in the UK, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia first and foremost follow the Disney Plus format, that means whatever new series that service gets that's shared with Hulu here in the States is released weekly as opposed to being completely readily available. That's why Marvel's adult-themed animated series MODOK has the entire season available in America thanks to Hulu as opposed to the show being released on Disney Plus Star once a week. So, with that being said, to all of my readers currently in the UK and the countries the monarchy used to own that still think it's worth a damn, that is why you only received episode one of the 10 episode first season of MODOK. And consider yourselves fucking lucky. Because <laughs> as someone who sat through all 10 episodes, I can confirm that you want absolutely no part of this show. <laughs> now, normally I'd follow that statement up with something like, not that the show is bad, mind you, dot, dot, dot. But no, that's, that, that's, that, that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. This show is fucking terrible. No, it's not Pat Oswalt's fault. No, it's not the moral oral slash robot chicken stop motion style animation. It's the lack of understanding regarding who MODOK is at his core in the comics that doesn't allow this new comedic take of the character to transition well into the scenarios that we find him in. So, <laughs> a little background on the show. MODOK follows, well, MODOK one of the top villains in the Marvel Universe. Like his comic counterpart, he runs the company slash villain organization AIM with Monica Rapacini. But all of his schemes against the Avengers, in which the only one that ever makes it on screen appearance is Iron Man for some reason, have pretty much bankrupted the company. He sells AIM to this Google equivalent, and his obsession in trying to get it back combined with the lack of attention he's been giving his family? Causes his wife Jody to want a divorce. So now we see MODOK at his lowest, trying to reclaim his spot at the top, while also trying to get his family back. 
Now, like I said before, readers, Patton Oswalt as Modoc isn't the problem. He's exactly who I would immediately consider to play the character if a more comedic take on him was needed. What is the problem is that the show doesn't make me want to care about his plight. And what makes things heartbreaking about it is that thanks to the scenario and the roles that they plopped Modoc in, there are just <laughs> there are just so many situations within the show that actually work. But because of how he's characterized within it, he never goes anywhere development wise. Like, I could count on one hand how many episodes there were in season one that were both entertaining and could have helped the progression of this version of Modoc as a character. So, spoilers, I guess, for everyone who hasn't seen all of the season yet. The first one is the second episode, when he time travels with his newly separated wife Jody to a concert they were supposed to go to back in the 90s as a way of trying to change her mind regarding her wanting a divorce. The second one is episode three, where Modoc takes the kids to a company retreat and attempts to try and make a good name for himself in front of the execs that the new AIM CEO is trying to make him seem lesser in front of. The third, <laughs> is episode four, where Modoc hangs with a bunch of no-name street-level villains that he later befriends after sympathizing and learning to appreciate them. And the fourth and final one was episode seven, and I have to give it credit. I've never seen an episode of a TV show that successfully delivered a scenario that revealed so much about so many characters proved to be a damn near perfect vehicle to produce so much potential growth for the main one, but still made me wanna blow my brains out. And this is the episode with Nathan Fillion's Wonder Man in it. <laughs> like, like how do you do that? <laughs> Basically what happens in this episode is that after seeing his wife Jody dating Wonder Man, Modoc asks his even more estranged daughter to give him a makeover to try and impress Jody at her book release party. We find out that Jody is using both Modoc and Wonder Man to help market her as an influencer and an author, proving that she's just as bad as Modoc is. And Modoc actually makes some healthy improvements to his life after he leaves the party embarrassed. Like I said earlier, all of these are great scenarios that help build and develop the main character in ways where they become better. But the problem with them is that none of them stick. Modoc never learns, Modoc never grows. Every time he experiences one thing that he can learn from and use to better himself for the sake of reclaiming his company, his family, and his dignity, he it is immediately washed away and he damn near has to start from scratch as the result of it in the next. It's like watching Sisyphus constantly roll his boulder up the hill, but instead of it falling back to the bottom every time he's about to reach the top, it falls every five feet, then 10 feet, then 20 feet, then five feet again, then 10 feet again, and then 20 feet again. It is absolutely maddening. But do you want to know a comic book character with their own animated series who does show a sense of progression in their development? One that, despite slipping a few times, always finds a way to learn from the lessons that they experience and better both themselves and their views without eliminating the show's potential for comedic moments. One that doesn't have to start their progression from the very beginning of their nature in every two to three episodes. I feel like you already know the answer to this question, but I'm gonna say it anyway, it's Harley fucking Quinn. So realizing that made me think, 
How is it that an adult animated show like Harley Quinn can not only do right by her, but also allow her to progress in these scenarios the show drops her in without sacrificing its comedy? And that's when I realized why Harley Quinn works, but MODOK doesn't. Because the creative team behind Harley Quinn, first and foremost, understands her fundamentals. They know and understand how she works at her core. And because they know and understand how she works at her core, the writers and producers can put her in scenarios unlike the ones from the multiple animated movies, series, comics, and live action films before it in ways that still feel like I'm watching an adult-oriented action comedy animated series about her and her posse shenanigans across the DC Universe. I didn't feel that when I watched MODOK because it was evident that the creative team behind the show didn't know what made him tick outside of just being the funny looking big headed supervillain from Marvel Comics that has an army of scientists in yellow radiation outfits. Which, considering one of the main executive producers of the show is Seth Green, and factoring in both the animation style of his show Robot Chicken, along with the Adult Swim show in question, usually making the type of jokes the show is now associated with, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that was the main way that they looked at MODOK in the first place. Does this show have potential? <sighs> Sure, I guess. Will I be watching a second scene? No. No, I will not. No, fuck you. Can I honestly recommend this show to anyone? Absolutely not. But if you're only gonna get into it because of the robot chicken stop motion animation and the type of humor usually associated with the show, then not knock yourself out, I guess. But once again, to my Canadian, UK, Australian, and New Zealand readers who have to wait a week for new episodes because they can only watch it on Disney Plus Star, consider yourselves lucky and do something better with your life. Jesus Christ. But I digress, readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comment section below what you thought of MODOK if you've seen it. Or if your only access to the show is through Disney Plus Star and you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, write in the comment section below how else you plan on spending your Friday nights now that you know that this show is a waste of your time. Whichever question you love to answer, I love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking in the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.